Big AI is not a bubble. It's a bubble balancing on top of a house of cards. At the very top are the twin cards leaning on each other. One says AI Doom, the other says AI Utopia. Just below, the Singularity card. The story of AGI improving itself at increasing speed to ASI, humanity's last invention. Below that, the infrastructure card, 80 billion dollar data centers, warehouses of GPUs burning enough electricity to light entire cities. And on the bottom row, a card that props up everything above. The belief that GPTs can think and reason. And if we just make them bigger, they'll be able to do all human labor. One sharp breath could bring it all tumbling down because that bottom card is a lie and I can prove it. A GPT is like a machine trained on statistical regularities. Which word sequences tend to follow others from 10,000 hours of recorded conversations? Feed it enough data and it generates conversations that are fluid and human sounding. It understands my feelings, someone exclaims. It's reasoning through this math problem, another insists. It knows what I meant even though I phrased it badly, a third marvels. And they're not wrong to be impressed. But it isn't truly understanding. It's matching patterns in its training data to patterns in your words. Your words pass through a veil the moment they enter the model. On this side, they carry human meaning. But on the other side, they're just number patterns in a vast mathematical fog. The intelligence behind the veil is breathtaking at pattern matching. It can mirror our language so perfectly that we swear something's looking back at us. But it's not. It's generating clouds and we're seeing dragons. Researchers at MIT recently found something disturbing that illustrates the nature of these large language models. Medical AI systems give dramatically different advice for the same symptoms depending on your writing style. Change your phrasing, hit the spacebar twice maybe, and suddenly chest pain that warrants it an ER visit becomes probably minor, put some ice on it. The patterns that these language models are seeing are not necessarily the ones that we care about. Now let's pull on that bottom card, the belief that GPTs can reason. Researchers at UC Berkeley and Carnegie Mellon sat these large language models down with the Tower of Hanoi. That puzzle where you move rings between pegs, child's play for something supposedly at PhD level intelligence, and the models failed. But you might say, well, of course they couldn't do it. They have a limited context window and they can't see what they've done wrong in the past. Well, the researchers removed that limitation. They let the models see every single failed attempt, the complete history of their mistakes, and the models just kept trying the same losing moves over and over, like a bird flying into the same window again and again. They could pattern match their way through responses, but they couldn't step back and think, hmm, this strategy isn't working. I need to try something fundamentally different. Because it doesn't have beliefs to update. It has a probability distribution. Which answer you get is a roll of the dice in a pattern space that you can't see. Harvard Medical School tested these medical GPTs using their chain of thought reasoning. The technique that supposedly makes them think more like us, work through problems step by step. The technique that's supposed to prove that they can reason. And the models got worse. The more that they reasoned, the more that they failed at actual clinical tasks. Curious, hmm? Intelligence in living systems doesn't just emerge from scale, it emerges from structure. Simple feedback loops coordinate cells into specialized systems. They create mechanisms for learning and genuine reasoning that compounds over time. But big AI is not building intelligent structure. They're building bigger cloud machines. And hundreds of billions in data centers rest on this mistake. At the peak of the tower sit those two cards leaning back to back. AI Doom and AI Utopia. Both tell the same story with different endings. In one version, AGI bootstraps itself to super intelligence. It solves cancer, fusion, every human problem. We enter a post-scarcity paradise. In the other version, AGI bootstraps itself to super intelligence 
and it pursues goals that we can't understand or control, and humanity ends. Not with a bang, but with an optimization process we can't stop. These stories are so emotionally powerful, so laden with hope and terror, that we can't see that they both assume the same impossible thing. That GPTs will just cross over from their mathematical fog space into our world of meaning and truth. But they won't. They can't. Because what we're really expecting is for a cloud machine to care about dragons. And to care so much that it would become a dragon. You can make it generate more convincing clouds. You can make that resemblance so perfect that everyone gasps. But the machine will never care about dragons. Because dragons don't exist in the meaning space where it lives. Now these transformer models aren't worthless. These systems are of course remarkable at what they actually do. But there's a chasm between useful tool and replacement for human cognitive labor. The current valuations are pricing in total replacement. The infrastructure build-out assumes total replacement. The fear-mongering articles and existential dreading all take total replacement as a near inevitability. I do believe that AGI is possible. I believe we could create systems that genuinely reason, learn continuously, adapt to new situations. But they won't come from just making Transformers bigger. They'll come from understanding intelligence itself. How do simple dynamics like homeostasis allow for real-time learning and reasoning? The researchers who crack that won't be the ones with the biggest data centers. They'll be the ones who stopped trying to brute force intelligence and started building it properly. Right now, the real danger isn't AI. It's the story we're being told. The one where ChatGPT or Claude or Grok is either our savior or executioner. Twin cards at the top of a tower, both balancing on the same shaky foundation. We're not conversing with gods or demons. We're watching clouds drift by, and we're very, very good at seeing dragons. Appreciate what these systems can do. Marvel at the patterns they generate, but don't build a tower on the belief that the clouds will wake up and become a dragon. That's all.